boys. It's game day. Let's go. Let's go. Big game. Got a big game today. My package has arrived. Oh, sweet. Nice. Goal! Great win, fellas. What game's next? G-Men are having a great year. Let's go blue! Here we go. Prime time football. Texans, Dolphins. Let's do this. Yes! Review. Yes! Yes! Heartland flags. Every sport. Every team. Every flag. Every team? That's right. Fine, fine. I'll get a Washington flag, too. Find your flag and so much more with fast, free shipping. Heartlandflags.com. Every sport, every team, every flag. Almost. Heartland Flags and Gifts presents Legends and Listeners with Scott Docterman and Chad Leistico. Fly them high and fly them proud. Find your flag at heartlandflags.com. Breaking down the Big Ten from the Channel Seat Studios, this is Iowa Everywhere. Hey, Hawkeye fans, Big Ten fans, and Iowans everywhere. Welcome into the Channel Seed Studios for a potentially somber but important episode 14 of Legends and Listeners here on the Iowa Everywhere Network. Chad Leistico speaking here. I'm a columnist for the Des Moines Register and I'm joined, as always, by award-winning Hawkeyes beat writer Scott Docterman of The Athletic. I'm going to keep saying that. <laughs> uh, Scott, we talked for about 30 minutes yesterday while I was driving back from Omaha uh, about how we could construct this show. And uh, maybe we talked a little Bears-Lions in there too, but now that script becomes figurative litter out my car window on I-80 East as the Wednesday news that Cooper DeGean got injured in practice and will miss the rest of the season is the latest gut punch for the Hawkeye team and their fans. Yeah. Uh, in a year where all we've had chatter and seemingly gut punches here, gut punches there. And I remember thinking back a couple of weeks ago when uh, after Cooper's touchdown was stripped uh, by the officials in the replay booth. And uh, we thought, well, maybe they'll get some good news on Noah Shannon. And that kind of changed the the narrative a little bit. No, we didn't get that. So four days, you, you tweeted this, you know, that after four days of good feelings about this team and uh, Iowa fans are excited. Voila, here we go. Uh, the best player on the team one of the two best players in the Big Ten on the defensive side of the ball out for the season. It's just another gut punch to a program that just seems to be like the the book of Job <laughs> in the Bible. And it's just like how much more it's can not you that take? Far off. It, there's not death, but it's yeah. close. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in football terms, it's pretty close. In you football know? terms, yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know. Yeah, uh, I mean, it, it's not life and death, you know, we know that, no. but, but man, I mean, you know, how much more do you have to weather, you know, to, as an Iowa fan to, to go through this every week, there's seemingly something that's just crushing. And, you know, I found a verse and I'm not necessarily going to be totally biblical, but uh, for the book of Job 30, 31, my lyre is tuned to mourning and my pipe to the sound of wailing. And I'm like, <laughs> How perfect is this for Iowa fans? You know, when you're talking about the four four foundational pieces are now out for the season and they still have a chance to win the West, Chad. And they, you know, the really good opportunity to win the West. But if those four were still there, you'd feel like, you know what? We're, we're, we're going to be the underdog going into Indy, but you got a puncher's chance. Now it just feels like, oh, you don't even have that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm using the Rutgers game as, you know, too much here. But, I mean, I felt like with Cooper, anything would have been possible in Indy. I mean, it's a game where, you know, maybe he's, maybe he's guarding Marvin Harrison Jr. I mean, gosh, how exciting would that have been, uh, mm -hmm. you know, if it's something like that. Uh, you know, maybe they use him 25 plays on it. Maybe he just goes like all out, you know, 100 and some snaps where it's just like the Cooper DeGene show, one last ride, 
just kind of robbed of all that and robbed of his last game at Kinnick. Uh, I don't think there's really much of a chance he comes back next year. I don't think we need to waste too much breath with that. Uh, but I do think uh, there's all, so much to unpack here. And one of the, and I realize we, you know, we've had, we've had, we've both had our own podcast where we've kind of talked a lot about this. So I kind of want to somewhat turn the page, but I also want to look back and think, my gosh, we only had 14 and a half months of Cooper DeGene in a Hawkeye uniform, essentially, uh, to, yeah. to enjoy, treasure, cover, uh, because he did, you know, he was a bit player as a, as a true freshman. As Kirk Ferentz continues to say, you know, he didn't even travel to Iowa State in 2021. He was watching from his dorm room. It's just been such a quick Cooper DeGene ride. Yet in that 14 and a half months, Scott, he became a legend. Yeah, I know. I was trying to think who who in Iowa history kind of fits his um, situation. And, you know, there's Tim Dwight, you know, who we both went went to college with at least in your case you did go to school with them and in my case you know at the same time um him and Niall Kinnick you know and I struggle to put anybody in that pedestal except Caitlin Clark and uh but but that said he's as dynamic of a in a short period of time as any player we've ever covered I mean three pick sixes last year two touchdowns returns this year I'm going to throw the asterisks out there, but that was, you can't take away what I saw with my own two eyes. And I feel like we were robbed of at least one more, and whether it would have been this week against Illinois, a pick six or a punt return or at Nebraska or in the big 10 championship game or in a bowl game. We're robbed. We're robbed of seeing that player compete at that level. And Iowa fans feel the same way. And it's just like, man, you just feel like this is a gut punch. You know, the other ones were painful because of what you saw on the field, you know, Luke Lachey, Eric all certainly Kate McNamara, but this one was like, ah, you know, he's a native Iowa and he was just a young, it's like, you could have, you just wish you could have gotten a few more games. And how, I mean, we don't like have, at least I don't have like on the record confirmation of this, but the, I think we both have heard he got hurt practicing offense. And yeah. so how, you know, fitting, cruel is that, that this off, I mean, he's playing an offense and of course the offense is cursed, right? I mean, and the ultimate, you know, that's the last chance that a defensive player ever plays offense again under Kirk Ferentz probably, right? <laughs> it's just, it just all sucks. <laughs> You know, how many times has he brought up that, well, you know, we can't we can't afford to lose. I mean, every week he's talked about that. And then, of course, it happens. And it's just like, are you kidding me? Are you really kidding me that this is the way it ends for him? And, <laughs> you know, because it's, it's a twist and it's a move and it's, you know, you can see it happening. And it happens in, in anybody, you know, in taking a jet sweep and trying to cut, and you know, and. You know, it, it's uh, like this song "Ironic" by Alanis Morissette. <laughs> it's not really ironic, but it's let's not also, play that one, Aiden. Let's yeah, not play it. Yeah, uh, rain on your wedding day and all that. And happy. Well, it's not. So. I mean, but we've seen the last of Cooper DeGene probably in a Hawkeye uniform, which is yeah. it's just it is sad. It's a bummer. I mean, uh, I don't. We don't. We aren't fans. We're journalists here, but we also recognize, at least I, at least I feel like I do that there's a, there are a handful of players in our time where you just you just love watching them and mm -hmm. from the press box every time he was back there and I know you fans felt 70,000 of you felt this way on Saturdays mm -hmm. and that's why you yelled coop, coop is uh you just want you just paid attention you just knew something was going to happen and the Michigan State game was such the the epitome of that that it's it just stinks that it's over it stinks mm -hmm. that it's over for everybody, the team, Cooper, the fans, ah, it's just, it's not, eh, we've, we're dwelling on it too much, but it, it, but I just wanted to point out his career is over at Iowa probably. And it's, it's not the way it should have ended. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about a guy who's, you know, like our guy, Dane Brugler at the, at the athletic has ranked as the 17th player, uh, potentially in the NFL draft, number two cornerback. He can improve upon that in the combine. Uh, his tape speaks for itself in so many different ways that there's with him, you know, like many of the other players, but he's, he, you feel he's a safe pick and he still has a higher upside. 
It's right. like his floor is is higher than everybody else's in the NFL draft. You know that at worst case scenario, you've got a starter and you've got a good player. And a special teamer. Yes. <laughs> Which is huge. Which, you know, he's going to be a returner. He's, you know, he's going to be a gunner. And you know that uh, he's going to and be a bottom line, a decent player for you on your roster. Um, but I think he's going to be exceptional at the next level. And he's going to be the first first round draft pick that's a defensive back for Iowa, even in this era of incredible players since since Tom Knight, 1997. So that's just that says a lot. I mean, before he was born. <laughs> so um, well, and he's not going to be I mean, no offense to Tom Knight if he's listening, yeah. but he's not going to be Tom Knight in the pros. Yeah, he'll be a little bit better, I think, than yeah. Tom was. There have been other players that have played, you know, you know, Amani Micah. Hooker, Micah, Micah yeah. you know, but he's built kind of like Amani Hooker, and he's got ball skills like uh, Micah Hyde. And that's yeah. really something rare and special. And, um, you know, somebody was like, well, you know, what's it going to take NIL to, to bring him back? Well, if, if he's the number 17 pick in the draft, the, the signing bonus is right around $8 million. Um, you, you know, that, first of all, that'd be a dumb, you know, allocation of NIL resources for one year is to bring somebody in at the cornerback to play for $8 million. But second of all, yeah, it just this, this, is, this just sucks. You know, you'd be better off looking at other players that potentially might return than using that money there. But but we were robbed, robbed, uh, robbed Chad. I mean, it was just not a, you know, it's just we we're robbed, and that's that's sad because that that player did not give up a touchdown this year as a cornerback, and he's a mm-hmm. Nagurski finalist, a likely uh, All American, probably if not unanimous, certainly consensus All American. He's going to have his picture on the wall in the All-American room, it's just, you know, stolen. You know, we were stolen. I want to remind folks that Legends and Listeners is brought to you by Heartland Flags and Gifts, which offers free shipping anywhere in the United States and always has fresh products, nearly every team, every sport, and every flag. Uh, visit our good friends online at heartlandflags.com or in store at 3719 Southwest 9th Street in Des Moines. Let's talk about the on-field impact of Cooper's injury. We've probably lamented this enough, um, <laughs> but uh, there's so many layers to that too. Uh, Kirk Ferentz on his show last night, ob- you know, confirming the obvious that the Deshaun Lee will be the next man in at corner. Obviously huge that he got a couple games of experience in early in the season. Uh, steeper challenge this week, no doubt, with Illinois' receivers. Uh, so that's significant. Caden Weechin will be the punt returner. Uh, but I, th- I think it goes even beyond that, Scott, because now all of a sudden, okay, what happens if Sebastian Castro goes down, even for a series? You know, who, who becomes your cash? Because <laughs> Cooper would have been that guy. Yeah. Um, what, you know, Gunner on punt team, it's, uh, it's not necessarily the biggest job in the world, but it's significant. Um, he he earns Iowa a lot of field position. Iowa loses a lot of hidden yardage with this mm-hmm. beyond what's happening at defensive back. Um, it's just it, it is clearly Iowa's best player, and it's going to impact this game on Saturday. Uh, how do you feel about the level of impact that we might see? It is significant for a lot of reasons. I mean, you look at Illinois and you look at, um, for instance, you know, Isaiah Williams might be their best player on offense. He's not the best player on the team, but you know, on offense is a wide receiver and you're putting a, fr- uh, a freshman out there. And, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say it's like Trey Palmer on TJ Hall last year, but there are some situations where it could end up like that. And you've got to be careful. And, um, you know, Deshaun Lee has played more than TJ Hall did last year. And I don't think Isaiah Williams has that kind of speed. I don't think anybody has, but, but that still, that takes away, that puts you in a little bit more of a dangerous situation. And then, as you said, with, with cash or, um, it, you know, maybe they, Iowa decides, well, we're going to go a little more four three, if that ever would ever be the situation. Um, you've got, and then, you know, what happens if there's an extra touchback? Or normally you would be at the four yard line uh, because your gunner didn't quite get down there enough, you know, and, and make the play that normally Cooper would make. Or, you know, God forbid something bad happened in the punt return game. You know, that's something that 
you know, you just don't want to <laughs> yeah. think about, you know? Yeah. That, Good that, point. I That's think that huge. is, yeah. I don't think there's a bigger play than, than a punt punt return goes the wrong way. Yeah. And, and he was solid. He fair caught everything if he could, or, or turn in those yards, which adds another first down. And, mm-hmm. and when you fumble a punt, it is the most significant play in sports because you've changed the dynamic of the game, the mental dynamic as much as the physical dynamic, because then oh, our defense has to go back out there. And it's and it's a 40 yard plus change of field position. And, it, you know, so, you know, Caden Weijan, I have no no reason to think that it won't be effective. He's he was good in at Iowa Western at that. And he's been the kick returner. But it's there's different. It's a different element when you've got a ball up high and you got people coming right down barreling on you. Uh, so I, I mean, I think that aspect is probably the most dangerous potentially. But then again, I don't know. Uh, I, I think Iowa can cover it. It's just you're not covering it with the best player on the field. Yeah, I'm interested to see you know how Illinois attacks too. We saw mm-hmm. uh, Brett Bielema announce Wednesday that. Luke Altmaier would be his starter, but now I want, you know, first of all, I didn't necessarily believe that. Second of all, I think both might play. Third of all, maybe Bielema changes course a little bit because now, you know, Altmaier is a little bit more of a threat with his legs. Yeah. Um, you know, 400 plus rushing yards, you know, if you don't count the sacks this year, he's, he's a guy that can get loose. But Paddock is a guy that can wing it. And mm-hmm. uh, they may have thought, well, it's a fool's errand to try to throw, you know, on one side of the field as all teams have figured out this year, but now maybe not, maybe you do attack Deshaun Lee and, and Jamari Harris at the same, you know, you've got options there. They've got good receivers. So uh, yeah, it's, it could affect that decision for sure. And uh, I kind of wrote this in my DVR Monday column, but even if you just uh, rewatch the Rutgers game, you know, Cooper's ability to just run up and fair catch short punts saved Iowa. I don't know. Like you said, maybe a first down every time. If you let those things bounce, mm-hmm. he caught three at the 50, uh, had that spin move that other time. I mean, mm-hmm. he just even just not returning the ball, he makes significant plays. So, yeah, there's a lot of hidden yardage out there. I know I'm dwelling on that quite a bit. but um, And uh, I did, I did kind of ask around, and it sounds like Cohen Entringer would be the next cash in should something happen to Castro. So they wouldn't – I thought maybe Wampa, but I think it's Entringer. And he looks the part. I mean, I'm not mm-hmm. – but anyway, just for folks out there watching, like, oh, my God, what happens if Castro gets hurt? Uh, Entringer would be a good guy. Or if Wampa gets hurt, then Castro back to safety, yeah. Entringer at cash. So – or maybe it's – maybe yeah. Castro stays. Whatever. Entringer's in <laughs> is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. he's the next, next guy that way. Yeah, so – Either way, he's a significant loss. You know, you can't minimize the others. I would say McNamara's loss is probably bigger and more impactful across the board, but this is number two. And and he's a well, you know, he's one of the best players in the country. So this is this leaves a mark. And when you when you lose two NFL caliber tight ends, you lose your quarterback for the season, and now you lose your best defensive player on one on an elite level defense, it's it's gonna cause some problems. And you know, if, if I'm if I'm Kirk or you know, if I'm Lavar, just knowing kind of how risk averse Kirk is more than Lavar, but it's you know you, you tell <laughs> Kate and um, fair catch everything, you know don't just don't mess around, just fair catch it. I don't know, but, but I don't you know. know, but maybe I, maybe I'm more risk averse than they are. <laughs> uh, one more question on this, and then we'll move on. I promise. Uh, <laughs> The timing of this injury, uh, certainly the season, we know that's bad. But as far as midweek, it's the last practice of the week. It's not like they have time to go practice again. You know, this happens Wednesday in practice. Um, you know, obviously Deshaun Lee's ready. Uh, it's a good thing he's healthy. TJ Hall's not healthy. So that's another issue. If one of those corners gets hurt now, then you're dipping back into – John Nestor, Brenda Diaz Fernandez, uh, Devin Hilson. I mean, it's it's getting thin. Mm-hmm. But uh, what do you think of the midweek timing of this? To not really have much time to kind of cope with it. Better than in game, like the Nebraska game last year, but not ideal. 
uh, yeah, I mean, the, the timing of it from every aspect is just cruel. Um, it, it, you know, the, the timing of it being the end of the season is probably the worst. If this would have happened in September, then, yeah. you know, hey, you might have a chance to get him back for the last couple of games of the year. And if this would have happened two weeks ago during the bye, then maybe you get him a chance to be back, uh, you know, whether it's Big Ten Championship or the or bowl game. You know, you just, you know, and then having it in the midweek, now they've already got the game plan set, you know. So how do you adjust that? I mean, if he is, if he was going to contribute on offense multiple plays, how does that impact it? And, you know, did they have, what kind of a package did they have for him? I, I just, you know, maybe they need to, you know, now they can auction off the number 81 jersey for, for Caleb Brown, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so That's right, I, yeah. You know, th- there's a lot of question marks, but, you know, they also have to, you uh, stick to their guns. You know, they have to figure out what, okay, what can we do now without him? If it's offense or defense, how do they, you know, they, they had to make everything in game last year when he got smoked in the head against, uh, you know, uh, Nebraska. Now they have an opportunity to figure out you're playing a team capable of doing some of the same things. What do you do, um, from a coverage perspective that maybe didn't work last year. Don't leave a, a freshman one-on-one with a, one of the top three or four receivers in the big 10, which I feel Isaiah Williams is. Um, those are things that you've got to be careful of and, um, and how do you attack? Well, Scott, the Cooper DeGene injury probably had some Iowa folks looking for a bottle of bleach yesterday, but hopefully you guys dialed it down and reached for a bottle of Steeple Ridge Bourbon, a new sponsor to legends and listeners. From farm to bottle, Steeple Ridge Bourbon offers a high-quality, delicious drinking bourbon. And if you don't find Steeple Ridge at your favorite grocery store, uh, retailer, ask for it by name. Steeple Ridge is distilled, aged, and bottled in Iowa by Lonely Oak Distillery. All right, Scott. Uh, This was going to be our main topic today. Let's move into it. Uh, A lot to play for here. Uh, The Hawkeyes, number 16 in the college football playoff rankings. That, to me, is significant. Um, Should not be undersold. It also should not be dismissed as a joke of any kind because this team has played defense at such a high level this year that I I don't feel like 16 is that much of a reach personally. And I feel like it's a – I feel like it gives this Iowa team a little bit more validity, but also a little bit more of a target on its back. Yeah. Well, you look, uh, it, it shows that certain people value defense differently. The, the AP voters or the, uh, you know, even the coaches who did rank Iowa, but the, you know, they, they look at offense as the key indicator scoring points. It's, it's almost a basketball philosophy They're Oh, they score. So that must mean they're better. But when you look, they're continuing to win and they've won 13 out of 16. They're eight and two there. They won decisively against an opponent. That's a bowl opponent. That's got a winning record. That's really looks pretty good in Rutgers. And um, I think it is valid. I, I think 16 is fair. You know, I mean, there, there could be, if they would have been 19, I think that would have been fair too. I'm not going to, you know, say that they needed to be higher or lower or, but I, I feel like, that they have, they controlled the game against Northwestern. They controlled the game against Rutgers. Um, for the most part, they controlled the game even against Minnesota, but you know, that didn't work out very well because of the official officiating, but, but, uh, overall, I think they're, they're right where they need to be, but target. Yeah. I mean, I, I think they're a target anyway, because they're the, you know, they're, they're the number one seed in the, in the big 10 West and they're playing two rivals that beat them last year. But I also think that uh, this is this is the right spot for them. Well, it's good for the Big Ten, honestly, if Iowa keeps winning, uh, because uh, you know that that Big Ten championship game, if Iowa makes it at ten and two, you're going to have a you're going to have a number like thirteen, maybe next mm-hmm. to Iowa's name, playing uh, you know a, a one or a two or a three in Michigan, Ohio State. Um, so I think that that's probably beneficial for the conference overall. Um, I don't know if people care that much about that, but I think it's, I do think the big 10 West has gotten trampled on a little bit this year, deservedly. So no question, but Iowa has a chance to kind of, you know, if it, if it can close this out, I feel like it's, 
it's an impressive. It's an impressive feat to do so, especially because they really uh, sour grapes here, probably, but should be eleven and one if they were to win these last two. So, um, all right, but let's positive vibes kind of flowing back in. I think today, Scott, with uh, Noah Shannon named honorary captain. I feel like I I don't know. That felt like uh, just a little bit of a turn in the page type of moment. Like, hey, it is time now to go win a freaking ball game on Saturday and we're going to send Noah Shannon out there uh, to lead us uh, sixth year senior didn't get to play this year uh, you were the first one I saw with the idea so kudos to Iowa for listening to Scott Doctor. <laughs> yeah they don't listen to me very often but in this case maybe it maybe it one person might have saw it and said no oh, that would be a good idea so um, you know what one thing that I like it when Kirk does this and that is um, you know what, we're going to beat our chest a little bit. And if we need to be the bad guy, if we need to, to throw, you know, the middle finger at anybody, let's do it. And let's do it with Noah Shannon, because that, that one of all the, the scrapes that he's had in the past, he's had them because he's been there for a million years, but of all the scrapes that he's had, this one seems to be the one that sticks with him the most because they're messing with his players. And when they mess with your players, that's where you feel like as a coach, you know, very, you will get very defensive very quickly. And, and all coaches are that way. Um, Fran certainly is that way. And, and Kirk is that way. And the, the level to which the NCAA messed with him, with Deshaun Hanica, but specifically Noah Shannon um, was uncalled for, you know, the, the ability to, to have the, Oh yeah, we're going to change these rules. And yes, he can go back to practice. And then it's like, well, but no, we're not going to do that. And, and then to pull him out. And this is his last year and his last opportunity. So, um, so for, for Kirk, it's like, all right, we're going to throw him out there and we're going to tell the world that we believe in this guy and he's going to lead us. He's going to lead us in, in practice. He's going to be our honorary captain because he probably would have been a captain and he played. And then he's going to go to midfield for the coin toss and he's going to walk out with his mom and, and his dad and, and be celebrated for who he is. Yeah, throw down the gauntlet, show a little swagger, be tough. And I think fans will dig this as much as anything because, yes, and the, the news of the, and the morning of, of losing Cooper Dugene, that can't be replicated. But you can, you know what, play back in black and there's Noah Shannon and he's going to center field and I'm throwing down the gauntlet and, you know, I'll say a couple of expletives that we were not going to repeat on a family podcast. <laughs> uh they don't usually have the honorary captain come down and back in black, but I, I feel like this week they should. Yeah, I do you know, too. Put him right in the middle on that big screen. You see him coming down the tunnel. There's Noah. <laughs> put, put all your injured guys right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> put Coop up there. They're all on crutches. Although I guess yeah. senior day, it's not. It's different yeah, on senior yeah, day. Yeah, that's so. true. Oh, well. Yeah, yeah, because he's going to be honored on Senior Day, too. So anyway, yeah. <laughs> we're going to get to Senior Day in a little bit, but let's just talk a little bit more on the field, uh, Scott, because uh, I was got a, you know, got a chance to clinch the Big Ten West on Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, so with or without Cooper, without Cooper DeGene, you got to get this win somehow. You're a three-point favorite. Uh, seems like throwing the ball is probably the best strategy, trying to avoid Johnny Newton as much as you can. I don't know if we'll see Logan Jones. I kind of doubt it at this point. Uh, so I don't know. What 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 is your offensive strategy? You've seen Deacon Hill have a decent game now. Um, can you rely on him to, to lead you to victory? You know, I think you can if you can run the ball. And I know it's chicken or the egg, but you have to run the ball. You can't, you can throw off of it. This team's probably, you know, and, and this will, this will come down to a little bit of Brian's script. I think early on, you'll probably see some play action, maybe a boot um, to do something there. I think you, you want to stay away a little bit from, you're, you're going to want to stay away from Johnny Newton unless he's double teamed, you know, and, and you're going to have to do that because he's that good. You know, and there's just no reason to try to tempt fate and to say, well, our God, you know, be arrogant in your protection and, and, and try to, uh, you know, you know, go ahead to head with, with somebody that's just not going to win. I mean, you know, and they were smart enough a few years ago when, when they ran into Jeffrey Simmons at Mississippi state in that outback bowl that you just know that, um, you know, that it's not the kind of guy. So what you're going to want to do is 
you're going to want to run a little bit more wide. He run, he plays the boundary. Iowa likes to run sometimes in outside zone to the boundary. You're not going to want to do that because because you're going to have to double team him or and you can't cut him because it's, it's football these days and you can't cut people. So it's just you know it's this all right. How do you make this work well? Um, if you're going to this may sound weird. If you're going to attack it where he is, bootleg would probably be the way to go because you're going to hope that he goes down the line of scrimmage and you can cut around the side of him and then throw to somebody like Addison Ostranga. But you're going to have to run the ball. That's been the key to success. They're 6-0 and when they hit 100 yards this year. And um, that may be running at Keith Randolph, who's not much worse. But, you know, you're just going to have to emphatically decide the, the game at the line of scrimmage. And they're probably capable of this, you know, as much as good as Newton is, they're still not great in a lot of areas. And you're and, and if you can have some success early, that will build confidence. And again, throw down that gauntlet. You know, you're not going to touch us. We're better than you are. And yeah, that's the mentality you got to take. Yeah, the right side of Iowa's line really improving. Uh, uh, Jennings Dunker having mm-hmm. playing his best football right tackle. Boy, has he been uh, – he has really solved that position that's been such a problem spot for yeah. the Hawkeyes for two, three years. And, you know, Connor Colby, now healthy, you know, he's playing really good football right now. They're banged up more so on the left side of the line. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, you, you have some confidence. I really thought Tyler Ellsbury played well. He's got strengths. He's got weaknesses. He can't pin and pull as much as Logan Jones. You know, he, he's not going to be out there running ahead of the running back, you know. But yeah. uh, he's got more girth and he can – he can bottle guys up inside. And I thought, you know, a friend of mine texted me, you know, talking about Rutgers, you know, their center had a bad snap there. Ellsbury's snaps have been great. Mm-hmm. And he's, he's considered the smartest and most intelligent guy with protections on the team. I don't mm-hmm. think you feel too badly there at center. So uh, how about this, Scott? Illinois defense, uh, 80th nationally against the run, 80th mm-hmm. in total, 78th against the pass. So, there's opportunity here. There are answers on film, as I kind of wrote in my previews. Uh, it's up to the Iowa coaches to find those answers uh, and what you can do. It's not like not like last year when Illinois no, was like yeah. the number one or two defense in the country. Yeah. They just it's not the same when <laughs> Iowa lost nine to six last year and in, in that painful game, <laughs> painful game, uh, not just because it was a loss for Iowa, but just painful to watch uh, that red zone offense. Not that we need to dwell on that anymore. <laughs> nine to yeah. six. I don't think it's gonna be nine to six on Saturday. Uh, I think we might see some points, honestly. Yeah, I think we will. Um, no, you know, this is a team that gives up, you know, almost 390 yards a game. And their schedule is pretty much comparable to Iowa's. They they played, um, you know, Penn State was the one crossover. They played them at home. They played Kansas early, you know, and lost to Kansas. Um, so, you know, as much as and, – and I'm as – big and bad at this as anybody that you start to look at all the ways the opponent can hurt Iowa. And then you forget about the ways that, well, they're not that good in this area and Iowa is capable of, of exploiting it. And I, I think that's probably fair here is if you can find a way to neutralize Johnny Newton, and they've done that in the past with good players, you know, they've been great players that, you know, sometimes they wreck them, sometimes they don't, but you know, they can, neutralize him and then if you make it a, a 10 on 10 game yeah you feel pretty good because there's no Devin Witherspoon there's no Sidney Brown there's no Quan Martin <laughs> you know thankfully for you know they've got good players on, up front I mean Gabe Jackis Yakis is a, a really good pass rusher uh, Keith Randolph is a really good defensive tackle type and and uh, but overall Rutgers had a better defense the, Illinois just has the best player yeah, well said. Um, Vegas, Scott, thinks Cooper DeGene is worth half a point. So I know a lot of people are, you know, freaking out, and rightfully so. You lose your best player, but it's only been a half-point line movement. Iowa favored by three points. Over-under is 30.5 at Circus Sports, which is the exclusive sports betting app of Iowa everywhere. Circus Sports is sports betting the way it should be, with the highest limits, lowest holds, and the best odds. Download the app today at the App Store or CircusSports.com. So, Hawkeyes favored by three. Scott, give me your give me your motivational speech for this game. Now, we've, we're turning the page. Uh, you got the home crowd. I I feel like a three point favorite probably isn't enough, even with all the injuries, just because the Kinnick Edge 
at home under the lights is really significant uh, in Iowa's favor. And, uh, you know, this is just not a great Illinois team, in my opinion. So um, give me your motivational speech. What are you telling what are you telling maybe fans and, and players going into this game? You know, who are, might be dwelling on the Cooper DeGene news? Yeah, well, I can't use swear words, Chad. So I got to I got to, you know, give a Cliff Notes version here. But and I wouldn't care about what, saying anything to the fans. I would say it to the players. And I'd say, you know what? You're the best damn team in the West Division. You've proven it all year long. You're the toughest team in the West Division. And you've proven that all year long because of all the mental uh, situations you have had to overcome. You've had to overcome, uh, you know, injuries on offense. We've had to overcome toughness off the field. And yet you guys have persevered. You guys have walked the walk. You guys have gone on the field and you've beaten every team's ass. Every team except one. And you know what? You're still the best team in the West Division. And you can go out and prove it. And you're going to go out and prove it to yourselves. You're going to prove it to everybody. And then most importantly, you're going to go prove it to Illinois because they don't respect you. You respect yourself. Go out there, beat their ass, win the West Division. Let's take a trophy in the locker room. <laughs> I'm ready to play. I'm ready to play. Uh, a quote from uh, Cooper DeGene. I, I wrote this story before the Wisconsin game. And uh, he said a, a couple quotes here from Cooper DeGene. So these are literally from Cooper DeGene. Uh, you look over at other teams in the fourth quarter, and sometimes you know that you've got them right where you want them. He said. So this is a team that, uh, and you know, that proved true of that Minnesota game, even though I did, Iowa didn't get the win. But yeah. uh, even from your from your most uh, talented guy, uh, he understands how to win these games. And he said he also said this in the article I wrote. This was ahead of the Wisconsin game. I think that's just the way our team is wired. We will fight to the end. We understand that it's a four-quarter game. I think it goes back to the way we prepare. We know we prepare better than anybody in the country, and we don't want that to go to waste. So I would expect Iowa to play a full 60 minutes, and they would have to. I'm sure the message is out there. Hey, Illinois has won four of its five games in the last minute or overtime of ball games. You think about the Toledo game, the Minnesota game, the Indiana game. Mm -hmm. I'm forgetting one more. Uh, now they did blow one against Wisconsin, but yeah. uh, this is a team that will play to the finish. Um, so you can't let up either. Oh yeah. At any point. Um, I know we're running a little low on time here. We're probably going to cut out basketball today just cause you know, with Cooper, it's uh, you know, mm. we'll have more basketball to talk about, but let's talk about senior day. This is a really interesting group of seniors. Uh, 20 of them being honored and that's not counting Cooper or, Luke Lachey or Spencer Petrus, who we might talk about, who are maybe in their last games at Kinnick Stadium as well as Hawkeyes. But you wrote about Tory Taylor, another legend on his way out. Scott, uh, first of all, I'm going to give you the floor on Tory. Second of all, uh, you know, RIP Steve Batterson. Uh, I do have the AP All American vote uh, in the state of Iowa this year, so convince me. Uh, one way or another, should Tory Taylor be on my first team? Well, I could give you every stat, and you already know him. Um, you know, I mean, he's got 19 uh, punts that landed inside the 13-yard line um, out of 24, which leads the country. And, in fact, I think he has more inside the 13 than he does than most people have inside the 20 this year. But, you know, Iowa fans already know this. I mean, the impact that he's had is profound. It, it is – he is a 12th defensive player. He's the one who flips the field. He's the one that ensures that teams have to go against Iowa's defense for 75, 80 yards. But really more important than that is, you know, he has brought a swagger to the spe to special teams. When you have guys like Jack Campbell and Cooper DeGene and others begging to play special teams, the punt team, because they want to be a part of something like that over the years, that that shows you what, it, what it's all about, that they recognize greatness. And I think, when you look at three games in particular, I think he won those games for Iowa. I would say Iowa State two years ago when it was a 10 versus nine game. Um, I think it was what, five out of eight were inside the 10 yard line. The Penn State game that year, um, six out of nine were inside the 12. And then this year at Wisconsin was just absolutely tipped the field. And it was a, with a really stiff wind, difficult situation. He's going to set the Iowa record for most punts. He's likely going to set the Big Ten record for punt yardage for a career. But 
is there anybody, especially a punter, anybody more beloved by the fan base? Punting is winning t-shirts. Um, Tori Taylor walks out there. I wrote about this, that the first punt of the season, I mean, punting is losing when it comes to offense, yet he gets a standing ovation from Iowa's faithful. Absolutely um, a legend. And, and so I, there's so much I could say about him that we've seen, that we've witnessed over our time here. And I fully expect him to probably get the loudest cheer on Saturday. I was just going to ask that. Is it Noah Shannon or is it Tory Taylor on Saturday? He gets the loudest cheer coming down the uh, – although Jay Higgins is going to get a big one too. The, the list is so long here, Scott, yeah. and it's going to be it's going to be a changing of the guard. It's going to be – it's going to be a lot of losses here. You know, last year was big because you had the star power going to the NFL, Jack Campbell, yeah. uh, Lucas Van Ness, Sam Laporta, uh, Riley Moss. I mean, certainly some some big-name guys came on for sure as well but man there's some there's some lifers here i mean i remember you know you got sixth year senior joe evans i'm thinking back to the 2019 game in evanston and he's having an impact in that game i mean it's been a long level of contributions for a lot of these guys logan lee Mm -hmm. and then you think about you know other guys going through the senior day line for another former walk-on quinn schulte uh you know even even a guy like nick nick de young you know a guy that's uh you know paid his dues been a basically a three-year starter level guy uh, and then you've got transfers you know you got a, you got a whole mix in here you got no or i'm sorry uh, nick jackson yeah uh, eric all yeah um all that uh i feel like i'm forgetting some other rusty names. fath rusty fath uh, did i say quinn schulte i can't remember yeah you did um you know logan lee uh and then of course you know he's not going through senior day is spencer petrus in there too so I don't know. Like, there's just so many guys who just have bled for five years, six years. Nico Ragaini, yeah. God, how did I forget him? Yeah. Uh, this is just a pretty uh, esteemed collection of just kind of like good stories, Hawkeyes that I think really developed into fan favorites. Even a guy here like Jackson, who's been here less than a year, yeah. people love him. And Eric All, too. Higgins, you know, one year contributor. My God, he's. <laughs> He's beloved too. I mean, although yeah. his father's more beloved, I think. Yeah, That's right. The- <laughs> hawk, hawk, hawk. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Just that whole list. What what strikes you there? Um, yeah, this is gonna be tough because last year, you know, you have your headliners. This year you have kind of the guts and foundation. And now because you know, even though this era is starting to evaporate a little bit, you still have COVID potential years ahead of you for Castro, Schulte. Jamari Harris, they have, they have questions that they could, uh, you know, I don't see any of them being, if they're drafted, you know, it'd probably be Castro and it'd be late. So maybe it, they would come back and that would really help solidify it. But, but some of the others, you know, Logan Lee, a, a gutty, tough guy who's been really, you know, the a foundation setter, Joe Evans and, uh, and Quinn Schulte, two former walk-ons, uh, you know, who really had major impacts. I mean, Joe Evans, um, you know, Kirk loves to talk about that, the Dallas Clark story, uh, you know, but I'll say this, the Joe Evans story is really the, the hallmark of Iowa football because walk on quarterback in high school at Ames high and comes across the state and ends up playing linebacker, then moves to defensive end, beats out guys like Amani Jones and, and Jaden McDonald to be a stand up edge rusher, then becomes a starter, you know, becomes a really you know, impact player. I think there's really nobody that's, um, you know, symbolized what Iowa football is more than Joe Evans over these years. And then, you know, Gutty got, you know, Nico has not had the senior year he's wanted, but he's an important player. You know, Steve Stilianos, you know, is, is elevated into an important role. And yeah, the and list it, keeps and, going, man. It's right. A big, it's an impactful list. It's not just like six guys and then a bunch of walk-ons. This, these are right. big time contributors. Go ahead. Yeah. And so I was going to have to look at which ones can come back, which ones want to come back or have the opportunity to, Um, you know, like Jay Higgins is a real pivotal one because he has an extra year, but you know, is he looking at it going, you know what? Um, I I'm not going to change a whole lot. My draft positioning, you know, is is I, I kind of look at him as probably next level guy, but yeah, me too. But, but then with Castro Schulte and Harris, I look at them as, Okay, you bring those three back, plus you have, um, you know, 
in Wampa and and you have uh, you know you know Deshaun Lee because I I don't think Gene is either, but and then you got to go to the portal anyway. So there's there's a but more than anything, these guys have been through a lot. They've been through the COVID year. They went through the racial discrimination situation. Wow. They've been through a lot of adversity on the field and off the field the last couple of years, and they persevered through some great. T- you know, very tough situation. So I think these are as laudable of a players as you'll ever have. Yeah, it's a, it's representative of what they've all been through. And yeah, so well put by you there. Joe Evans also is the guy who gives the inspiring speech to the team in the big huddle before the game. Uh, asked him about that a while back early in the season. He's like, he does put a lot of thought into what he says. He, he talked about that before the Iowa State game when he went back to Ames. So he put. So I, I I would love to hear what Joe Evans is telling the team <laughs> in that big mass on Saturday. Uh, maybe somebody you know Hawkeye Sports uh, social media can get the mic and you know dub out some of the stuff and uh-huh. put it you know yeah. put it on social media after the game maybe if they win. Um, just an idea there, but um, yeah, yeah, it's gonna be tough. Uh, a lot of these guys really been engaging with the media as well. So really. Some, and and Tori, I would put yeah. out of all those guys, I would put Tori at the top of the list. Uh, he's going to be missed in so many ways. Uh, man, uh, enjoy the day, Saturday Hawk fans, because there's a lot of a lot of guys you can still cheer for, even mm-hmm. though number three is not out there. Yeah, yeah, that and that doesn't change because year after year, players leave and they leave a, a mark, and you know whether it's Cooper, you know, eventually, but, you know, I mean, you can't re- replace some of these players. And I'll look at some of them like um, Jack Campbell, Tyler Linderbaum. Um, and I think Tory Taylor's in that category, just all timers at their position. And they're a great players and they just, you know, it's like, well, next year, you're just not going to be able to put that up there, but then you can have a, a Jay Higgins who can come in and contribute and play at a level to where you're like, yeah, that's not much of a drop off. That's he's just a different player, and and I think that's what you got to look for, and that's where the development comes in, and and you got to trust your your coaches. And I think, you know, there there are a lot of things, and we've talked about it a lot, Chad, of things you can complain about with Iowa's football. There's a lot of things you need to freaking celebrate too, because no team in a country would be eight and two in this position. Now their schedule has helped them, however to lose these players and to go through the strife to be eight and two, it says a hell of a lot about the coaching staff. One guy I don't think I even mentioned was Kyler Fisher, which I should yeah. have um, blocked a punt mm-hmm. or, or um, he blocked the one in Nebraska, right? In 2021. No, it was Mark, he, he, Mark, oh, he Steve pulled Turner. it in. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Mark Case did that. That's right. Um, I mean, a guy that's representative of this whole group, you know, stuck yeah. with it, walk on, mm-hmm. made it to the finish line. Um, he could come back, I suppose, as well, but uh, he's yeah. another one on that list. But, yeah, uh, I, I would not feel good. I know we're going long here, but I wouldn't feel good about ending this podcast without getting a chance to talk with you, Scott, publicly about Spencer Petrus. Uh, I think probably uh, you and I probably have seen uh, – I don't, I'm not trying to toot our own horn or anything, but just gotten to know Spencer, I guess, a little yeah. bit more over these last three years. Uh, really – excited for him that he's getting healthier and has a chance to go into the portal and knowing him, um, you knowing him a little bit, you know, feel like, uh, he's the one that he turned me on to Ted Lasso, by the way, Rich, <laughs> what a great show. Yeah. Um, he, uh, uh, he would hate this, that he's getting in the headlines this week because he, he's helping the team prepare, you know, yeah. senior week. You know, he doesn't want to be a distraction. He doesn't want to be, any more than a footnote, but you got to enter the portal to, to go through this process at this point. But anyway, uh, give me your sense. What do you make of uh, where he could end up next? Um, and I think we both – goes without saying, we both appreciate uh, – you know, you can talk whatever you want on the field, but off the field, the guy has been uh, a model teammate. And that's underselling it probably. Absolutely. I mean, last year – he won walking away our golden gavel award, you know, for how he handled himself, not only with, a, with us, but just the way he handled himself in, in public. And, and that, that never changes the way we feel about, you know, somebody because we know them. I mean, I understand, you know, I, me and you can complain about the bears, but we don't know them personally. And, but those who do 
may speak differently. And I think that's the same way with Spencer Peters. I've never been around a quarterback with a better football acumen than him. You know, whether or not he can, he throws a pass over somebody's head um, doesn't change the fact that he knows the game better than everybody else and, and, and can decipher it. And that's why I think he has a huge bright future in coaching in this position because I think he understands it in so many different ways. And I'm, I'm thrilled for him that he's going to have this last opportunity. And, and it's not, it's good that it's not at Iowa. I think it's good that he gets out of Iowa and, and probably goes, I'm just going to say like a mountain West school. And maybe it's a, it's a different scheme. It, it allows him to kind of flourish in a different way and gets different competition and, and then it helps him in the future, you know, and it gives him one more chance at, at a pro career because he doesn't have it here, now, especially after his injury, which was significant. Torn labrum and rotator cuff. Are you kidding me? Um, so I, I think this helps him. Um, you know, he goes out, he has one more year in college, maybe he plays well and then, you know, gets an opportunity at the next level. If it doesn't happen, he'll definitely be a coach. And he's going to be somebody that I think in eight to 10 years will be a coordinator and, and do a really good job for a long, long time in this, in this position. Yeah, I'm going to be following whatever he does next. I think it's going to be uh, pretty cool. And he'll be, you know, if all works out for him, he'll be, you know, learning a new offense in January somewhere. And, um, you know, his future, he's got such a huge uh, future in football ahead. And he's uh, just a first class guy. So, mm -hmm. uh, all right, that'll do it, Scott. Uh, Nebraska next week. Um, on a totally unrelated note, uh, there's a. I, I found out this week what you found out this year. There's a clear number one insufferable fan base on Twitter, and it's not even close. Is it Nebraska? <laughs> I'm not going to say anymore. But the Hawkeyes play Nebraska next week. Uh, if you want to go through what I said about uh, Cooper DeGene and Trey Palmer on Twitter, you'll find some insufferable comments oh yeah they they didn't watch the game did they they didn't see who's out there but anyway i i've had my fill of that and let's uh, hopefully i can enjoy thanksgiving in peace next week um but uh anyway good good to talk to you chad do you have anything you're working on that you'd like to share uh you know i i got to go to we didn't get to talk about iowa basketball but i did get to go to the uh the game at creighton and i just thought i guess i'll just point people to the to my coverage from that game i was the only iowa media there um again not trying to like tutor on horn or anything like that but just it was nice to be able to um talk to the guys after the game i feel like there's a, there's a vibe of positivity around the basketball team uh the men's basketball team and um we're going to talk about the women i'm sure a lot on this show but they got a big game tonight against Ken k-state at home and then i'm pretty sure i'm going to be at the drake game on sunday for the women um so that'll be fun to to catch that one so mm -hmm. uh anyway it sounds like scott we are going to be on next wednesday we haven't finalized that but next week's episode holiday week will be a wednesday morning episode of legends and listeners from the channel seed studios to get you set for iowa nebraska so i guess i'll talk to you saturday and talk to you uh talk to you next week sounds good for Scott Docterman, this is Chad Leistico. Thanks for tuning in to Legends and Listeners here on the Iowa Everywhere Network.